Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So today I have brought to you a very interesting topic, which is a little apart from what we were doing by now. We were discussing questions, we were discussing the news associated with the questions. But today's video is different because here we are going to discuss the intention of the government. Okay, whether the government is planning to curb the fertilizer subsidy or not, and why are we discussing this question? You will get to know in this video. But before that, let me announce this thing to all the students that. If you are an ABAD student, then this video is going to be very, very crucial for all of you because your phase one result is not out yet and phase two dates are not announced. So all the news which are coming during this month or tenure, these news are important for your upcoming phase two exam. In ESI current affairs and in ARD current affairs also, you can expect such a question to come. Okay, irrespective of that objective question as well. You can use the knowledge that uh, which I will be giving you in this video in your descriptive answers as well. Okay, of ARD. So let's be quickly begin this video. But before that, let me inform you that we have launched the live course for RBI SEBI in Nabad. This is the timetable of that, and this is our mobile application. Okay, first of all, the very first question that should be in your mind, at least it was in my mind when I to, uh, took this topic that why should we discuss about it? the very first reason for that is that the central government is planning a new scheme okay pm prana now first of all focus on just this word it is just the planning okay in case you have your phase two examination next month or in november most probably next month you can expect your phase two examination so it Till your phase two examination, nothing concrete comes out on this, then do not please mention that this scheme has been launched. It is just the planning of the scheme that has been announced. Now, what is the full form of prana? It is promotion of alternate nutrients for agriculture management yojana. Now, what is the basic idea behind it? The basic purpose of this scheme is to curb the use of chemical fertilizers in agriculture by incentivizing states. Okay, now what is the basic mechanism of the scheme? First, I will teach you that. Okay, the center is going to provide funds to the state. Now, those funds will be used by the state for creating awareness among the farmers so that they curtail the use of chemical fertilizers and shift towards organic fertilizers, organic manure. Okay? So first part of the funding would be spent on the awareness campaigns and second part of the funding would be spent on developing the infrastructure. Okay. Now what kind of infrastructure? The manure infrastructure, the organic input infrastructure at the village, district and block level. So in this manner, this scheme is going to curtail the chemical fertilizer in itself. So here the focus is not directly on the subsidy, but on the use of the fertilizers by the farmers. Because if the use is curtailed, then automatically the burden of subsidy would reduce and at the same time, the soil health will also improve so it will be a sustainable uh, method to do that okay and the farming in itself will become sustained now let's move ahead in this video because we have a lot to discuss the next point that we are going to discuss is the burden of fertilizer subsidy on the government actually how much is the burden because this is the intention of the government at, uh, at least we can say this is the outright intention because the burden is very high and the government aims to reduce it. However, I'm not saying that the government is not concerned about the natural farming or sustainable farming. That is also a, an agenda, but the main agenda is this only. So let's see what is the burden or how much is the burden. Rupees 2.25 lakh crores. This is going to be the uh, fertilizer subsidy expenditure in this current year. This is 39% higher than the previous year's figure of rupees 1.62 lakh crores and guys you can quote this amount in your exam as well descriptive answers if you encounter any question regarding this okay now do, do remember that it is the estimated figure and not the 
real figure as of now it may increase or decrease in the future as well but this is guys the actual figure of the last year okay i will also discuss why this uh, amount has increased okay but <clears throat> there is a proper structure to the video which i have decided so let's stick to that structure now we have discussed about the fertilizer subsidy which is a very big issue for the government but on which product does the government provide subsidy on which fertilizer do you know about it so that's what we are going to discuss in this slide first of all know this fact that <clears throat> government is providing subsidy on nitrogen phosphorus potash and sulfur these are the nutrients which try to enrich the soil before sowing of the seeds okay so these uh, the fertilizer subsidy on these fertilizers is given under the nutrient based subsidy scheme of the government which is being implemented since 2010 then in total the government provides subsidy on four types of fertilizers first is urea second is dap that is diammonium phosphate then we have the mop muriate of potash then we have the npks the nutrients which we discussed here so in and all you can say that the um, government has covered entire area of fertilizers in india which is used by the farmer so it is the entire basket of fertilizers and government is providing the subsidy on almost all of the fertilizers used by the farmers and this is guys causing a lot of burden on the check x check okay now here uh the subsidies amount has been a uh, requirement has been given to you that it has been increased by 21% now this data is not important for you as of now just focus on the products because these informations are static information and very general for the agriculture students okay so do remember this thing now how will the scheme be financed i have already explained to you that the pm pranam scheme aims to provide funds to the uh, states and then the states will curb the use of chemical fertilizers by creating the sensitization programs and infrastructure so <clears throat> let's take an example to understand it better suppose the government has to provide subsidy to two farmers and the amount of subsidy in total is rupees 200 so uh, government is spending rupees 100 on each farm with the pm pranam what will happen that one farmer has withdrawn from the chemical subsidies uh, sorry chemical fertilizers and he has moved to the organic farming so now the burden of chemical sorry the subsidy would be of only one farmer the amount is rupees 100 how much the government has saved here rupees 100 so this is the saving of the government right now 50% of this saving will be distributed to the states and the remaining 50% will be kept by the center now this 50% that is rupees 50 the state will spend on two things okay so rupees 50 uh, will be with the state and rupees 50 will be with the center and both of these governments are going to spend majority of their amount on the infrastructure creation okay so you can see it here 70% of the amount will be spent on the infrastructure development and capacity building okay how will the capacity uh, building be undertaken by providing the technological awareness to the farmers and the technology to the farmers and infrastructure is of the manures or organic inputs okay then the 30% will be used as the grants for incentivizing the farmers like in the form of subsidies or whatever kind of grant is needed for a farmer to shift from chemical fertilizer to the organic fertilizer now guys there is one more dilemma that is the chemical fertilizers have a higher yield therefore the farmers are very reluctant to shift from the chemical fertilizers to the organic fertilizer because immediately when you shift to the organic fertil uh, fertilizer or organic inputs then what will happen your yield will decrease and ultimately it will impact the farmers income therefore the farmers may not be willing to shift to the organic input and this 30% grant may be used by the states in order to incentivize the farmers by compensating for the income loss now this is the opinion of mine i am stating this that this might happen 
the government has not stated it yet okay so do remember this point so what i have explained is written here you can read it on your own nothing much is there now apart from this how will the government measure whether the states are undertaking the activity or not whether the states are actually using the funds for the purpose of pm pranam or not the government is going to use the da dashboard of the ministry now which ministry undertakes the fertilizer or uh, you can say subsidy or everything related to fertilizer we have a separate ministry ministry of chemical and fertilizers so the fertilizer and you can say everything related to fertilizer comes under the administrative control of the ministry of chemical and fertilizer and not the uh, ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare okay so this distinction is very important for all of you to remember now ministry dashboard will be used and ifms will be used it is basically an integra integrated fertilizer management system of the ministry itself so the data of all, both these sites will be used by the government to assess the performance of the states in terms of this pm pranam scheme again guys this is the planning okay not the concrete uh, you can say uh, scheme has been launched now how much is the actual expenditure although we have discussed it earlier as well but i have mentioned it separately in detail here because the data of 2021 to 2022 is important for all of you to remember so you can read the data on your own and this highlights the need for curbing the chemical subsidy okay <clears throat> fertilizer subsidy i continuously say the chemical subsidy but whenever i say chemical subsidy it's your duty to understand it that i'm talking about the fertilizer subsidy okay for the coming year uh, basically the current year the subsidy is expected to reach 2.25 lakh crore okay now what is going to be the impact of curbing the fertilizer subsidy or you can say the curbing the use of chemical fertilizers so first look at the statistics India guys is the largest user of fertilizers and the third largest producer of fertilizers so we are consuming more than what we are producing okay so definitely this indicates that we are importing fertilizers a lot and i am going to show you the data how much are we importing and that is the precise reason for increase in the government's expenditure in fertilizer subsidy we will discuss about it but let's first discuss about the statistics so first is this that we are the second largest consumer of fertilizer and the third largest producer of fertilizer uh, by the time this position may vary okay but as of now this is the data now during this tenure the imports of fertilizers increased by 8% now this is not very important for you as of now let's move ahead to the imports so guys dap diammonium phosphate and npk 90% of these two fertilizers are imported in india urea is also imported in india and your uh, muriate of potash is also imported so in and all we are importing all the four categories of fertilizers okay and we are heavily dependent on the imports of these products so you can clearly see the import uh, amounts of these fertilizers i have one picture also which will help you understand it better first of all pay attention to this thing the data is of january 2022 and secondly <clears throat> it is in lakh tons whereas here i have mentioned the data in million tons okay so don't get confused so now guys we are going to look at the data of fi21 because fi22 data is not confirmed <clears throat> okay not confirmed as in, as in it is of january 2022 only and it is uh, not till march 2022 okay so we do not have the clear picture yet as far as fi21 is concerned urea's requirement was 350.64 lakh tons out of the 246.03 lakh tons were produ was produced in india this much was imported again <clears throat> in case of dap we are importing more than what we are producing in order to fulfill the domestic demand okay here you can clearly see that the amount of uh, quantity of import is higher for dap and similarly it is higher for the npk <clears throat> nutrient based 
subsidies okay now guys nitrogen and potassium i will tell you why the amount or the expenditure has increased of the government these two fertilizers were heavily sourced from russia and ukraine <clears throat> and because of the war the uh, international prices of these so uh, these fertilizers increased and when the prices increased in order to prevent our farmers from getting affected by that increase the government had to increase its subsidy and that is why the increment in the expenditure was there against the revised estimate revised estimate of the budget the revised estimate for 2021 to 2022 was somewhere around 1.4 lakh crore but the actual expenditure was 1.62 lakh crore so how is it happening it is because of the rise in the international market uh, okay so that is the reason behind the increment and that is why the government wants to shift to the organic farming and curtail the use of chemical fertilizer however there is one more dimension to that uh, to it which i am going to discuss later in this video okay kuch suspense to banaye rakhna chahiye otherwise you will go away okay now let's discuss the top uh, you can say fertilizer consuming states first is uttar pradesh then we have maharashtra madhya pradesh karnataka andhra pradesh these are the top 5 states which are using the maximum uh, percentage of the fertilizers because they are very you can say agricultural rich areas at the same time very high population is also there okay so that is the basic idea uh, you can say or the thing that we needed to discuss here it's just the data you can see it on your own as well but uttar pradesh maharashtra madhya pradesh karnataka and andhra pradesh are the top 5 of chemical fertilizer users and 13 states in all account for 92% of the fertilizer consumption okay we are talking about the fertilizer consumption i hope you are aware of india's first organic state as well as ut mention it in the comment section below now then what is going to be the impact if the farmers stop using chemical fertilizer first impact would be that agriculture india has expanded the agricultural output every year and the consequent need for fertilizers has also increased now if the usage of the chemical fertilizer is curbed rampantly then what will happen food production may suffer uh, which may lead to food shortage the next impact of this could be the indigenous production targets are not always met here we are talking about the fertilizer targets are not always met even after imports gaps remain between the requirement and the availability of fertilizers so imports decline to honge if we shift to the organic fertilizer okay so that is what it is saying however we need to plan it out very accurately and very deftly the next impact of this could be that fertilizer manufacturing and disbursing industry will see a decline obviously there is a booming fertilizer distribution as well as uh, you can say manufacturing industry in india because we are the third largest producer of fertilizer do remember that so if we are curbing the use of chemical fertilizers this industry is going to see a downturn so we are pushing one industry and uh, declining the other industry okay that is going to happen but uh focusing on the organic input is very very important because it will lead to sustainable development okay how i will discuss that first agricultural output may decrease leading to food shortage immediately if we uh, stop the use of chemical fertilizer of or if we do not plan it out accurately then definitely it will lead to decline in the agricultural output leading to food shortage okay india's import dependence on uh, for india's import dependence for the fertilizers would reduce this would help uh, the forex in sa uh, saving okay the forex of india would be saved because here we will not be so dependent on the imports we will be dependent on our organic import which we will create in india itself the next impact of this would be the burden of subsidy on the exchequer would reduce soil health will improve obviously because of the organic fertilizers this will lead to the creation of new value chain of organic fertilizer so here 
one fertilizer industry would go down but at the same time a new industry would uh, wake up and that industry would be of organic fertilizer if we plan it out accurately okay then the next is it will reduce the risk of toxication of plants okay also the nanoplastic today itself i was reading very interesting article on the nanoplastic okay what is nanoplastic it is 1 billion of a meter in size okay this plastic is one billionth of a meter therefore it is very easy for this nanoplastic to enter the uh, the body of the plants as well as animals okay so what happens the plastic that we throw that plastic is decomposed or you can say that plastic is broken into nanoplastic it converts into nanoplastic it goes into the soil and when it goes into the soil the plants absorb that along with the nutrients from the soil so the nanoplastic is there in the plant then we vegetarians consume the plants directly right and the uh, non-vegetarians also consume the animals okay so suppose the goat eats that plant with nanoplastic so that nanoplastic is traveling to the goat and when the human will eat that goat so that nanoplastic will travel to human's body now the very dangerous fact here is that these nanoplastics do not go out of the system very easily they remain in the gut of the humans and the animals and the plants for a long period of time and it is very very uh, you can say a big risk for the health of the planet as well as the humanity okay so we should wake up for the health of the soil as well as the plants so that we also can be saved okay so we have discussed a lot about the impact of uh, banning or you can say reducing the use of chemical fertilizers so what is the substitute of that chemical sub, uh, sub, uh, chemical fertilizer the substitute is this organic farming we all know what organic farming is using the organic inputs like your manure compost vermicompost everything that is your organic farming that's the simple meaning so let's discuss about the scope of organic farming in india <clears throat> Organic farming, guys, may not only address the quality issue and sustainability concerns, but it is also a debt-free future. Why? Because the farmers have to take a lot of debt for undertaking the activity of agriculture. So, input may hit zada kharcha hota farmers ka. So, if the farmers are creating the manure from the livestock, <coughs> so here the manure is created by the farmer himself. So input is secured and <clears throat> additional source of income is also secured by the farmer because now he will also open his or her dairy with the help of the livestock or allied services. So this is an additional source of income at the same time the expenditure on input will also go down. So that is why it is a debt free future for the farmers or the agriculture industry in India. <clears throat> okay it will also address the increasing awareness awareness about the safety and quality of food as i told you long term sustainability of the system because if the soil is enriched then obviously the planet is healthy we are healthy we are going to sustain for a longer period of time i hope all of you are aware of this fact that many of india's products are rejected internationally because of the high fertilizer content in the fruits or in the vegetables so that is also impacting india's economy so why not shift to the organic uh, fertilizers or organic farm accumulating evidence of equally productive okay it is not like that it is not uh, true that organic farming is not a productive method if it is used or if the economies of scales is practiced then definitely organic farming is also a productive means to generate more and more yields however for that we need to ensure a good supply of the organic inputs and at the same time everything should be uh, supplied to the farmer in the right time in ample quantity so all that supply measures or the considerations should be made organic farming is appropriate for small countries uh, sorry small farmers in developing countries like india why because we import a lot from outside and if we are producing our own inputs then the need for import is eliminated the burden is reduced so the money that right now we are spending on import of subsidy uh, 
fertilizers that amount will be spent on the technological advancements of the agriculture sector we can develop more weather forecasting stations we can uh, include more and more farmers under the fasal uh, bima scheme and many more uh, development measures can be taken for the farmers and technological uh, advancements can be undertaken if we shift to organic farm so guys do pay attention what i am saying in this video because i am also giving you the ideas what you can write in your essay or answers if you encounter any answer related to organic farming sustainable farming gastronomy or related to your fertilizer consumption whatever it is if you have an answer a question in your examination related to any of these topics you can use the points that i am discussing in this video in your answer okay so do listen to me very carefully now organic agriculture helps to reduce the poverty food security is also ensured how the poverty is reduced i have already explained that allied services or uh, allied income is also there for the farmers and the debt free income is also there the debt free input uh, availability is there and the low cost is also there okay now there are variety of factors for which uh, the because of which the poverty will be reduced and food security will be ensured by using the organic farm how increasing yields in locations with low inputs now there are very remote areas where the fertilizer procurement is not possible or near to negligible presence so what will happen in those areas now with the organic farming the farmer will be able to produce the uh, manure or whatever is needed there itself and use it in the agriculture product uh, agriculture activity biodiversity and natural resource conservation on the farm and in the surrounding environment will be undertaken so it is sustainable creating food that is both safe and diverse so that is most important here because now the consumer is also awakening to the safety of the food okay having a long term sustainability for the environment and the soil despite the fact that commercial organic agriculture has to face the stringent quality certification system organic product has its value when it has the certification of being the organic otherwise it does not have any kind of value in the market and there are very high standards for qualifying a product as the organic product in perspective of that the organic farming or the organic industry farming industry is booming the demand is very high because now the consumer is Uh, awakening okay the consumer is conscious about the health that is why the uh, the entire agriculture industry is shifting to that and i am talking about the global industry okay so 25 to 30% increment has been seen in the uh, organic farming demand in the past 10 years irrespective of the stringent quality uh, standards so now we have discussed about the organic farming i hope you must have heard about the zero budget natural farming as well so i'm going to give you a basic difference between these two terms so that you should have a clarity organic farming guys i have already told you where we this uh, we use the organic inputs okay these are the organic inputs which we can use but what is zero budgeting natural farm focus on the word zero budget that means the cost should be lower lower than the cost of the final output final output as in the selling price so that the farmer has more and more profit okay zero budget means that a natural farming means using the organic inputs now what is the difference between organic farming and the zero budget natural farming the difference is that in organic farming the focus is merely on using the organic inputs okay we do not Uh, care that much about the uh, cost to the farmers. For example, this process of vermi composting is very expensive. Okay, and not all farmers can afford doing this vermi compost. However, I am contradicting here because throughout the video I have told you this fact that organic farming would be a cheaper alternative to the farmers. But yes, guys, understand this point that I am talking about. it being cheaper than the chemical fertilizers okay and if we talk about the overall um, you can say uh, cost involved in the organic farm that it is you can say it is nominal here we are just comparing the organic farming concept 
with the zero budget natural farming concept okay so the concepts are different and the basic difference is this only that in organic farming the focus is entirely on the organic inputs whereas in zero budget natural farming the focus is also on the low cost for the farmer so that the farmer's productivity the farmer's income can be increased okay these are the methods through which the organic input can be created and these are the components of the zero budget natural farming briefly i am going to look at it beej mitra the seed treatment jiva mitra no fertilizer no pesticide use mulching mulching soil and straw is used and vah uh, pasha that is soil moisture again for this we use the natural uh, organic goods or organic manure for soil moisture <coughs> so guys this is the last part of the video where i am going to discuss about our neighbors hasty move to ban the chemical fertilizer because that is an example in front of us we and we should not replicate the mistake which the neighbor has done okay let's learn what sri lanka did sri lanka immediately imposed a ban on the fertilizers in the country which led to low production of the food which led to food shortage in the country and this uh you can say the fuel was added to this fire with the covid pandemic because fuel uh, covid pandemic as well as your uh, ukraine russia war because fuel prices increased and uh, fuel prices ke sath sath aapke food prices bhi increase ho gaye international market mein which led to an overall prices in sri lanka so the food crisis particularly started with the banning of the chemical fertilizers immediately without proper planning okay now with proper planning if they had undertaken this activity then it might have different results okay so that is the example we need to learn that we should plan it out properly before phasing it out okay so i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching it